This video is specifically for any of my astronomy students who missed class on August 28th and need to make up the in-class activity. If you have Stellarium on your home computer, you can kind of follow along and do some of this stuff. But for those who don't, I've recorded some videos, and in these videos, you will have the questions that you need to do. This is the first of these videos. Again, this is video one for August 28th. So one of the first things we looked at in this lecture was altitude and azimuth. And I've got a grid down here I can bring up to show the altitude and azimuth. And we were looking at the sun initially. Now I've already gone ahead and set the time for when we were in class. And you can use this grid to write an estimate for the azimuth. And again, the azimuth measurements are given along the side. Um, they go around as we're going through, and the altitudes are going up. There's an introductory video just on altitude and azimuth if you're not quite sure of what's going on. So question number one would be, what is the approximate altitude and azimuth of the sun at the time we were doing this in class? I won't wait long here because you can always pause the video as you're writing down your answers. The second question was to zoom in and list a more specific, more detailed altitude and azimuth. So again, you might have to go back to both the textbook or the earlier videos to remember which one is the azimuth and which one is the altitude. But question two, you must clearly label one number as your azimuth number and the second one as your altitude number. Now I'm going to turn off the sky, which allows us to see a few other objects in the sky around where the sun is. And we're going to come up here to this object which is above. And if you zoom in, we see it's the star Regulus. We had students click on that object and it brings up information over here on the side. Now, it may be a little bit hard to read here on the video, and so you may want to go in on Stellarium yourself, but I'm going to try to adjust this so that things are a little bit clearer. And notice that one line in here lists the altitude and the azimuth, and see if you can read that number. If not, you may need to come into my office, but question number three would be what's the altitude and azimuth or in this case it lists the azimuth and the altitude of the star Regulus during class time. If you can't read it off the video, come talk to me, but that's question number three for your in-class. Now for the next question, we're actually going to do a couple of things here. In the first one, we're going to come over here to our, not our time menu, we're going to close that out temporarily. We're going to come over here to our location menu. And you need to pick another place on the Earth. Now when we do that, it will actually change our sky a little bit. So I'm going to pick some place up here in Canada. We're going to zoom back out, and we see that the sun is no longer at the same location. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, and on your paper, I want you to again write down, this should be question number four, what is the approximate altitude and azimuth for the sun from Canada. And notice we haven't changed the time, so this is the same time, it's just a different location. Now for your last question on altitude and azimuth, we're going to turn the time on. 
and we're going to speed the time up. I want you to strive here for the last question on the altitude and azimuth. How the altitude and azimuth seems to change as time moves forward for all of these objects. The Sun, Regulus, Mercury, Venus, Mars, and all of the other stars that are there. You don't have to give specific numbers here, just a verbal description in a sentence or two of what was happening to the altitude and azimuth as time moved. That's the first section, your first activity here for this lecture for August 28th on altitude and azimuth.